Today we're going to enjoy the story, Nothing Sticks Like a Shadow. What I want us to do is actually connect it and compare it, you know, what's the same and what's different, to the story we've read in the past of what makes a shadow. So this one gave us lots of good information about shadows. Now let's see how we connect it to the story, which is not real, it's a fiction story about nothing sticks like a shadow. Let's enjoy it and let's see what we can compare. Nothing sticks like a shadow. As I read the story, remember we're looking for comparing to the story we read in the past, what makes a shadow. Nothing sticks like a shadow. Anne Tompert. She's the author that wrote the words, illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. And she is the illustrator that drew the pictures. Nothing sticks like a shadow. One day, Rabbit was dancing a wild fandango in a field filled with clover. Woodchuck was watching him from the doorway of his burrow. Isn't it lonely playing by yourself? Woodchuck asked. I'm not alone, said Rabbit, pointing. See my shadow? It goes where I go and does what I do. I know what you mean said Woodchuck. I can't escape my shadow either, no matter how hard I try. I can if I want to, said Rabbit. Oh no, you can't, said Woodchuck. No one can. I can too, said Rabbit. Can't, said Woodchuck. And they pitched cans and cans at each other until Woodchuck said, I'll bet you my hat you can't. Looks as if I'm getting to go have a new hat, said Rabbit. He ran and hid behind the trunk of a huge tree. When he looked around, however, he found his shadow standing beside him. Woodchuck laughed. <laughs> You'll have to do better than that, he said. Rabbit hurried over to a bunch of bushes and hid behind them. He looked around. No shadow did he see. I've lost it, he cried, peeking from behind the bushes at Woodchuck. Give me your hat. Oh, no, you haven't, said Woodchuck, pointing. Rabbit looked to where Woodchuck was pointing and saw his shadow's head peeking from behind the bushes, too. Take my advice, said Woodchuck. Give it up. Stop wasting time. Nothing sticks like a shadow. With this, he went into his burrow. Woodchuck thinks he knows everything, Rabbit said to his shadow. But I'll show him. I'll run away from you. And with a great leap, he set out across the field of clover. Rabbit took longer and longer leaps. His shadow took longer and longer leaps as it followed right behind him. Soon Rabbit came to a path beside a river. There he met Beaver carrying a broom over his shoulder. Why are you running? asked Beaver. I'm trying to get away from my shadow, said Rabbit. Woodchuck bet me his hat that I couldn't. Well, said Beaver, it's easy to see you can't run away from it. See if you can sweep it away. Nothing sweeps better than a new broom, you know? And I just bought this one at the market. Thank you, said Rabbit. And he began to sweep the path where his shadow lay. I wonder if it'll work. Back and forth. Back and forth, Rabbit swished the broom. Great whirlwinds of dust filled the air. Soon Rabbit was coated with dust. Dust got into his eyes, making them itch. Dust got into his nose. He sneezed, and then he sneezed again. But he didn't stop sweeping until he could, could see his shadow no longer. 
<laughs> That's a lot of dust. I've lost it, he cried. I've lost it. Dropping his broom, Rabbit danced a little jig. As he danced, the dust settled to the ground. And there was his shadow dancing beside him. I guess shadows can't be swept away, said Beaver. I'm sorry I couldn't help you. He picked up his broom and went on his way. No sooner had Beaver left than Skunk came along. Goodness, he exclaimed. What happened? I've never seen anyone so dirty. I was trying to sweep away my shadow, said Rabbit. Everyone knows you can't sweep away shadows, said Skunk. You can't hide from them or run away from them either, said Rabbit. Right, said Skunk. When two things are stuck together, you must pull them apart. He leaned over, grabbed Rabbit, and pulled. Nothing happened. He grabbed Rabbit again and jerked so hard that he tumbled over backward. Did it work? Nope. Skunk was ready to try a third time when along came Fox on her way to a meeting of the sewing circle. What in the world is going on? she asked. I'm trying to pull Rabbit away from his shadow, said Skunk. Woodchuck bet me his hat that I can't get away from it, said Rabbit. Fox looked at the shadow carefully. Then, he, then she took her scissors from her sewing basket. Some things are too hard to tear apart, she said. Let me see if I can cut Rabbit's shadow loose. Clip, clip, clip. Fox went with her scissors. Clip, clip, clip. Nothing happened. Fox was still clipping when Raccoon came along. Well, well, Raccoon said. What do we have here? I'm trying to get rid of my shadow, Rabbit said. Why? asked Raccoon. Shadows are handy things to have. Sometimes they show you where you are going, and sometimes they show you where you have been. I know, said Rabbit, but Woodchuck bet me his hat that I can't get rid of mine even if I want to. Did you try hiding from it? asked Raccoon. Yes, said Rabbit, but it didn't work and I couldn't run away from it or sweep it away. I couldn't cut it off, said Fox. Let's try soaking it off, said Raccoon, and he ushered Rabbit to the river's edge. Rabbit put one foot into the water, then jerked it out. It's cold, he wailed. Go on urged Raccoon. Rabbit took a step. Keep going, said Raccoon. Rabbit shivered. It's too cold, he cried. He swung around to leave the river, bumped into Raccoon, and fell into the water with a great splash. The river swirled around him. He tossed and rolled, trying to get back to his feet. Ah, uh, that'll get rid of his shadow, right? Raccoon grabbed him and dragged him to shore. Rabbit was wet to the skin. Water dripped from his ears. His clothes hung on him like wet rags. Never had he felt so miserable. But the water had not washed away his shadow. There it was beside him. Looks as if you're stuck with your shadow, said Raccoon. Why don't you give up, asked Fox. Tell Woodchuck he's right, said Skunk. I don't want to, said Rabbit. 
but I guess I'll have to. Rabbit walks slowly across the fields. When he reached Woodchuck's burrow, Woodchuck was not at home. Rabbit stretched out on a flat, sunny rock to wait for him. His shadow stretched out beside him. He was tired. The hot sun felt good. Soon steam rose from his drying clothes. He thought about moving to a shady spot, but he was too sleepy to do so. Anyway, he said with a yawn, if I stay here, maybe the sun will melt my shadow away. Rabbit tried hard to keep his eyes open to watch the sun melt his shadow, but his eyelids grew heavier and heavier until he fell asleep. It was dark when Woodchuck shook Rabbit awake. You win, said Woodchuck. Rabbit yawned and stretched and rubbed the sleep from his eyes. Woodchuck put his hat on Rabbit's head. Congratulations, he said. Your shadow is gone. Where did shadow go? Rabbit turned round and round. Oh dear, he welled. The sun did melt my shadow. That's what you wanted, isn't it? asked Woodchuck. No, welled Rabbit. I was only trying to show you that I could get rid of it. If I wanted to, and now it's gone. What am I going to do without it? At that moment, the clouds parted. A full moon shone, and there was Rabbit Shadow. Look, cried Rabbit, it's back. You were right after all. And he and his shadow whirled and twirled in a wild fandango. Of course I'm right, crowed Woodchuck, snatching his hat from Rabbit's head. I told you, nothing sticks like a shadow. So we finished Nothing Sticks Like a Shadow, and I wanted to compare it with What Makes a Shadow. So, What Makes a Shadow was a non-fiction story, and it told us how shadows are made where nothing sticks like a shadow is a fictional story. But they do compare, okay? Comparing can be that they're different in certain ways. So how are they different? Well, this one gives us real information where this one is fictional. Animals don't talk to each other and do stuff like that. So that's different. What's the same though, there are things that are the same. In What Makes a Shadow, they told us the things that we need to make a shadow. We need sunlight or any kind of light, something to block the light, and something for the shadow to fall on. Well, in Nothing Sticks Like a Shadow, we had Woodchuck betting Rabbit that he couldn't get rid of his shadow. Well, you can't get rid of a shadow. What Makes a Shadow told us that. If you have light, something to block it, you're going to have a shadow always hanging around. It's hiding somewhere. Okay? So that's how these stories are the same. That you can't get rid of a shadow. You know? When Rabbit and Hedge, um, Rabbit and uh, Woodchuck thought they got rid of the shadow at the end, it was just a they were stuck inside a cloud shadow. Once the clouds parted and the moonlight came in, there was Rabbit's shadow again. So, comparing things. You know, what's the same about two things? What's different about two things? You can do it with books. You can do it with your video games, with your TV shows. You can do it with fruits. You know, apples and oranges, they're totally different fruits, but they're both sweet. But one's crunchy and one's juice, more juicy. So there's different things. Comparing. See you guys later. Bye.